Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of the course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So let us just briefly recap what we have done in the last class. So in the previous lecture we were looking at temperature dependence of polarization. In a ferroelectric material. And we saw that ferroelectric materials undergo what we call as Curie transition at a temperature Tc which is called as Curie temperature and at this temperature when you heat the material, the material transforms from ferroelectric to, to paraelectric. So the hysteresis that you see at temperatures lower than Tc it disappears and what we have is a more or less like a linear behavior of polarization electric field curve. So, at Tc the structure also changes from centrosymmetric to to non centrosymmetric uh, uh, sorry uh, non centrosymmetric to centrosymmetric structure upon heating and uh, so this is uh, uh, basically what it is and uh, we also have this uh, the, the material follows the susceptibility follows curie law so the susceptibility shows a behavior as 3 tc divided by t minus tc in many books they it's also written as uh, 3 theta divided by t minus theta or it you can also see it is also written as 3 t naught t minus t naught. So, it depends upon the type of book that you are following, but generally this is the behavior that susceptibility follows as a function of temperature. So, basically uh, you can see from here that as T approaches T c uh, the susceptibility tends to become very large and this is also manifested in dielectric constant. So, when you measure the dielectric constant measurement dielectric so, dielectric constant versus temperature shows a maxima abnormal increase at temperature T c. Okay. So, this is what we did in the last uh, couple of lectures. Today, we will look at the thermodynamics of phase transition in uh, ferroelectric material. So, So, this relies on what we call as Landau theory. So, according to Landau theory, uh, we have seen in the past uh, lecture that you know the polarization when you apply. Um, so, the, the polarization can be related to electric field through susceptibility. So, this is susceptibility. So, this is for at least for linear region. Okay. Basically, uh, you, you apply electric field, external electric field leads to change in the charge density in a polar material that is polarization. And uh, uh, similarly, when you apply stress, you can change the charge density. So, d i is equal to d i j k uh, into x j k or you can say sigma j k. So, this is what is piezoelectric effect that we have seen. Okay. And then similarly, we also saw the uh, pyroelectric coefficient that was so change in spontaneous polarization as a function of temperature gives you the uh, 
pyroelectric coefficient. So, there are many couplings like this. So, basically what we looked at was couplings between electrical, mechanical and thermal properties of uh, dielectric materials and these are a special dielectric. Uh, so, piezoelectricity is shown by uh, what we call as non-centrosymmetric material, pyroelectricity is shown by non-centrosymmetric and symmetric and polar materials whereas, ferroelectricity is shown by non-centrosymmetric polar and in which polarization is reversible those kind of materials. Now, what we do is that we from the, so what we do is that now we, we first realize what is the free energy. So, free energy of a, uh, free energy of a ferroelectric let us say of such a material where these properties are coupled, it is expressed by, so free energy is a function of polarization. So, you can take three components of polarization P x, P y, P z, so that is polarization. It is also component of stress, so sigma x to sigma y, sigma z. So, basically instead of writing this, I can just write function of p i. So, where p i could be 1, 2, 3 and then you have sigma i j. So, stress tensor and then of course, temperature. Okay. And then free energy is also affected by what we call as electric. So, now this is polarization is the generally what we measure after applying electric field. Stress is something which you can apply or measure after you have uh, application of electric field or application of strain then you have thermal response. So, basically when we apply electric field we can measure polarization, when we apply stress we can measure a strain or vice versa. And uh, similarly, when we apply electric field, we can measure stress or um, when we apply uh, stress, we can measure the polarization and so on and so forth. So, this is how this it sort of couples these properties. So, you can do legendary transform to relate it to uh, really the stimuli. So, stimuli in this case would be E. So, this is epsilon sorry, E sigma and temperature right. And uh, you can write this in terms of E sigma and T or you can write this in terms of P epsilon and T or it could be X i j or it could be capital X i j right. So, there are various ways of writing this free energy equation that we saw in earlier lecture. So, now let us write a little bit detailed free energy equation. So, let us say we write uh, elastic Gibbs free energy. Uh, in terms of variables, temperature, stress, x and polarization. So, now we talk of ferroelectrics mostly in terms of polarization instead of D the charge density because polarization and D are interchangeable. So, instead of D we will use P will will uh, which is which is more common quantity and uh, and we assume very small changes in in t x and p okay so the free energy expression turns out to be so free energy expression g1 can be written as g not t this is equal to del of g1 del t into delta t plus del of g 1 del x i j x i j plus del of g 1 into d p i. So, this is the first order change that you make on the basis of temperature, the stress and the polarization. Okay. Now, now you need to take the second order terms. So, so far we did not con consider the first uh, second order terms, but we need to do the second order terms which is nothing but Taylor expansion. So, the second order terms are 1 half del 2 g 1 by del t square into delta t square plus half of del 2 g 1 divided by del x i j del x k l divided by 
x i j into x k l plus half of del 2 g 1 del of p j into del of p i into p i into p j. So, this is the second order term for temperature, stress and polarization. Now, we look at the interdependence of these. If we go to del 2 g 1 del t del x i j. So, this becomes delta t into x i j. So, this is the first interdependence of. So, you have first derivative del g upon del x and after that you make a change in temperature and then. So, this is the interdependent term. Then second interdependent term will be it could be between temperature and polarization. So, this could be delta t into p i right and then third term is del 2 g 1 del x i j del uh, p k and this is x i j into p k and then we can have uh, various other terms. We have alpha delta t cube which is the uh, volume expansion term and then we have beta i j k p i p j p k this is the third order term. So, now we take the third order term. So, this is the third order term, this is the third order term and then we take gamma i j k l m n x i j x k l into x m n plus other higher order terms. So, this is a massive equation. So, basically what are these terms? These terms are uh, alpha i j k. So, so, alpha basically alpha beta i j k and gamma uh, sorry beta i j k gamma i j k l m n. n. These are third order coefficients right of derivatives with respect to temperature, with respect to stress and with respect to polarization right. These are the three. So, here we assume that G the free energy describes both polar and non polar phases. So, polar will mean that it is uh, ferroelectric phase and non polar will mean paraelectric phase. So, this is T less than T c and this is T greater than T c right and then all the coefficients as we see they are tensors. Are vector slash tensors depending upon the coefficients, okay. And uh, of course, if non-polar force, if the if the if non-polar what will happen? If non-polar phase is centrosymmetric, which means displacement in positive direction will cancel the displacements in negative direction. As a result, all the odd terms will cancel out each other. So, all the okay. So, we imagine that our ferroelectric is assume that ferroelectric is uniaxial which means polarization either is in this direction or in that direction. There are no multi component polarization vectors which might complicate the situation. So, this is p plus this will be p minus and the field is applied. parallel to the polar polarization. 
just for the sake of simplicity okay so basically we we want to write a expression for free energy of a crystal and uh, whatever we do when we want to calculate the value of various independent variables we need to minimize the free energy with respect to that variable right when you want to calculate something at equilibrium then free energy value must be minimum for that particular variable just like we de we do it in defect concentration many any other thing the free energy should get ma minimized for that particular variable so now we would like to expand this free energy equation in terms of polarization only and we will ignore other terms so we will just look at the polarization for a uniaxial ferroelectric term ferroelectric and ignore the stress field so we write g in terms of p only ignore stress fields okay and uh, and this is okay because you have a uniaxial ferroelectric so we are not considering any other uh, directions as such and it's a unstrained crystal so let's say we write the ferroelectric gp as the energy as becomes half of a p square 1 over 4 b p to the power 4 plus 1 over 6 c p to the power 6. So, we write this expression for free energy that is in terms of polarization only g p is equal to half of a p square plus 1 over 4 b p 4 plus 1 over 6 c p 6 plus and then minus e p which is the product of electric field and polarization which is the depolarizing energy for a ferroelectric because in ferroelectric when you have polarization aligned in one direction then there is a opposing force which is the depolarizing energy which wants to depolarize the material and we take that we take even uh, powers only because uh, energy is same for plus ps or minus ps direction and the and the other term cancel out each other as we just discussed earlier for a uh, pull for a non polar centrosymmetric phase so here e as we see is the electric field and a b and c are constants which are function of temperature they are temperature dependent okay so this is a simplified equation of course you can write a complicated equation but you can see that we have written that equation just in terms of polarization ignoring the stress field and let us say you want to now find out where is the minima of energy with respect to polarization so equilibrium with respect to polarization is achieved by minimizing the free energy so we say that del of g p versus del t del p as a, at a constant temperature is equal to 0 okay so if we do that then uh, uh, this expression can be a of p plus b of p cube plus c of p 5 plus minus of e is equal to 0 so assuming that first if a b c are all positive okay because we do not know the value of a b c yet so we are saying that right now assuming that if a b c are all positive then of course you can see that and and let us say if e is equal to 0 then we can say that a p plus b p cube plus c p 5 is equal to 0 ignoring higher terms ok and that is ok if we assume the change in the polarization is small and uh, as a result and higher order terms will not play a significant role so if that is true if a b c are all positive and e is equal to 0 then we can clearly see that p is equal to 0 is one root right right so at p is equal to 0 there is certainly one minimization that will occur so that is first lesson that we learn from this exercise so basically we can say that at a temperature so now when are these conditions met these conditions a b c are positive are met so when t 
is greater than a critical temperature Tc and A is greater than 0, simultaneously V is greater than 0, C is greater than 0. In that case, the free energy shows, so this is G versus P. So, at P is equal to 0, we have a free energy minimum. So, basically for this condition, we represent the material as material being material is in paraelectric state and which what it means is that when E is equal to 0, P is also equal to 0 and that is what it meant for a pyro, for a pyroelectric for a paraelectric state this was our plot. So, this is P, this is E saturates of course, but at P is E is equal to 0, the P is equal to 0 that is what root is and that is where the free energy minimum occurs. So, this basically suggests that at E is for, for A greater than 0, B greater than 0, C greater than 0, at T greater than T C, at the material is in paraelectric state with polarization V equal to 0 as a root. So, now let us say in the above derivation that we did, we took a p plus b p q plus c p 5. Now, let us say E is not equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us say assume that E is not equal to 0. If E is not equal to 0, then we know that A p, then we said that d del g by del p is equal to 0 at constant temperature. Okay. So, A p plus b p cube plus C p 5 minus E was equal to 0, right. This was the expression that we have. Now, let us say we ignore third order and higher terms for a small polarization, okay. Then we can write A p minus basically we are saying if p is small, right. So, A p minus E is equal to 0. What it means is that we have A being equal to uh, E divided by P or we can say A inverse is equal to P divided by E. And what is P divided by E? P divided by E is nothing but the susceptibility. So, this is susceptibility of a ferroelectric uh, for a linear in the linear region that is chi is equal to P divided by E which is nothing but a inverse. So, now on the other hand, so this is the first part of it. Now, on the other hand, if we say, if we assume A less than 0, but B and C uh, greater than 0 and what did we say earlier? A, B, C all are temperature dependent. So, which means something has happened to temperature because A has changed its sign. So, if A is positive for T temperature greater than uh, for T being greater than T C, then T must have gone below T C for A being less than 0. So, this condition is valid for T less than T C. So, in this case, if A is less than 0 and B and C are greater than 0, then there should be, so not only P is equal to 0 is a root, there should also be a root at P that is non-zero. So, we must have a root at P not equal to 0, right. There should be some finite value. So, this is expressed in, in this form schematically. We will do a detailed analysis little in a little while. So, this is G and this is P. So, we have a root here that is minus p r, this is a plus just write minus p and plus p and this is a maxima that we get at. So, I mean this is maxima or minima we did not define it right. I mean so, so here we are what we are getting is uh, a maxima in g at p is equal to 0 and minimas in g at two values that is plus p and minus p and this condition is defined for t less than 
T c and this is for A being less than 0 and B c being positive and basically this is manifested in terms of uh, in, in, in this fashion. So, if you now put the two curves together, okay, if you now put the two curves together, let us say we plot G as a function of polarization and this is polarization. The first thing that we drew was like this, right? This is G, uh, this is the curve at T greater than T c when we have one root. What happens when you increase that decrease the temperature at T less than T c? We have a situation which is like this. which is at T less than T c. So, at this temperature A is greater than 0, at this temperature A is less than 0 and B c being equal to 0 for all temperatures. So, in between what happens at T is equal to which means if A is changing its sign, it must go through 0, right. At this temperature is greater than 0, at this temperature is less than 0, it makes sense that A will go through sort of a change of sign at T is equal to C T C where A is equal to 0 and that is where free energy shows a shallow sort of minima. So, there is a transition that takes place in the nature of free energy curve. This is so just a little perturbation below C will give you two minimas like this. So, this is reflected in terms of polarization. So, if you plot now polarization as a function of temperature, the polarization decreases gradually at a temperature called as T c. Okay. So, below T c you have finite polarization either you will have plus p or minus p, it is a uniaxial ferroelectric and both the states are equal. So, you can write this as mod p. Okay. And you can also plot another parameter that is susceptibility. So, susceptibility we saw that it varies as, so if you look at this expression it varies as uh, P over E, right. But in the previous analysis that we did, we will do temperature dependent analysis and we will see that susceptibility 1 over chi varies in this fashion. So, it has certain dependence at temperature above T c. 1 over chi decreases to 0 at T c and then again increases. And in terms of dielectric constant, what it would mean is that if you plot dielectric constant, let us say epsilon r, you will have you will have a divergence of dielectric constant at this value, right? Or even susceptibility, right? Because chi is equal to epsilon r minus 1. So, this kind of phase transition where susceptibility where there is a gradual change in the free energy plot, where the polarization is dropping gradually, where susceptibility goes to a minimum 0 and then again increases or, or sorry 1 over chi uh, as you decrease the temperature first decreases and then increases and in at T c it goes to equal to 0, this kind of transition where there is no discontinuity in the polarization in, in the in the in the uh, susceptibility and there is a, there is not a sudden jump in polarization, this kind of transition is called a second order. phase transition and if you calculate the in this case you will not have a discontinuity in uh, entropy or specific heat uh, when you calculate uh, for these materials. So, these are second order continuous phase transitions where susceptibility uh, does not change abruptly at the transition or order parameter polarization is called as order parameter the order parameter does not abruptly become equal to 0 rather it goes uh, it goes to 0 gradually. Okay. And this is what it means in terms of since what happens in this case is the, the polar, polarization can be related to entropy in terms of. Uh, so, I will not do the analysis or detailed analysis, but you can relate the entropy as minus of del G by del T right. And then you can calculate delta S as being equal to minus of half P square uh, del A by del T and this is also continuous. 
So, when this is continuous which means the phase transition is second order. If there is a discontinuity you see then it is a first order phase transition. If it is continuous then it is a second order phase transition. So, this is basically a second order phase transition. It is seen in materials such as Rochelle salt K H 2 P O 4 etcetera. Okay. So, what we will do is that we will stop here. Uh, we will look at the analytical treatment of this phase transition in the next lecture and we will also follow up with the discussion on the first order phase transition. Okay. Thank you.